Hello everyone, this is a video on how to do the UNSWNP15 data set in a unsupervised manner. Now this is a data set about uh, network intrusion detection and an interesting feature about it is that the uh, amount of data which is malicious actually outnumbers the amount of data which is uh, normal or benign. So uh, more quickly I'd like to mention that all of my code for this series is actually in my cybersecurity repository rather than my YouTube repository. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, by the way, you guys can just hit the this button over here to open this in a collab and you don't have to worry about uh, getting this stuff into your own machine and dealing with our compatibility issues because some things actually involve you having to download our uh, Visual Studio 2017 build, build tools. Alright, so we start off with with importing the uh, basic stuff you would expect I in this notebook I actually don't think I use Kairos but it's here who cares uh, in particular we're going to be using SK loan for some things and a library called PYOD which I'll talk about later so we start off by uh, getting the train and test set data train set and test set from uh, this guy who's hosting it and first thing we do is drop the ID because it's not meaningful in any way it's just a sequential number who cares about it uh, so here's the amount of contamination in each of these uh, parts of the data set we can see that the contamination ends up being 68% uh, which is greater than 0.5 so by convention our contamination is actually 0.32 which corresponds to the amount of non malicious data so over here our contaminated data is actually our non malicious data which is what I spoke about a little while earlier so we get our label encoder and we encode our data I'm sure you're familiar with this if you're watching this video we can see that our uh, mode of our data is 36.1 percent and that corresponds to our uh, normal which is uh, kind of interesting of course I mean which is a bit expected the mode is normal uh, just realized small chance this may not actually be normal but uh, it doesn't really affect the video in any way here's what our data looks like uh, some of you may have a semantic understanding of this to me half of this is just gibberish I of course know what TCP means but I personally have no clue what something like this means count destination source LTM you yeah, have no clue these are of course categorical variables having to do with whether it's a file transfer protocol command whatever that actually means and yes, uh, with this data set, we can have two types of uh, uh, classification. It could be a multi class or it could be label, which is just binary. For this, we're just doing our uh, labeled. So it's going to be binary classification. It makes our task uh, significantly easier. And if you wanted to, you could change this to attack category right here. So just to start off with a uh, quick and dirty benchmark we can see that uh, in a supervised manner we would get approximately 95% accuracy and if we were to do a ensemble word classifier we would get a 95.4% accuracy uh, quick note uh, with the latest version of the library which this uh, object comes from this will have changed to something else but uh, if you hit shift tab it will give you the new word for it if you haven't installed these things you will need about how you will need at least PYOD these ones you don't really need but anyways let's continue you import a whole bunch of stuff you have PYOD dot models to import a whole bunch of classifiers and right off the gate we use our local fa outlier factor cluster based local outlier factor and then uh, 
whatever C O F stands for. I actually don't even remember. Uh, connected connectivity based outlier factor. So we find that the uh, accuracy for these is hovering at around 40%, which is not very impressive. At least PCA's uh, normally detection is uh, about 46% accuracy, but that's still not very impressive. Depending on the number of variables we use to uh, shrink the dimensionality down, we could get up to 52% uh, accuracy. Outlier for uh, isolation. Isolation force is not very good. KNN is still not very good. Run class support vector machine is surprisingly good. Uh, angle based outlier detection is quite computationally expensive, and we find that it's not very good. It is, of course, subject to uh, all of these are subject to uh, hyperparameter optimization. You would want to uh, change this hyperparameter to to whatever is suited for your own individual data set. HDB scan, not very good. I actually tried it with the uh, different levels of uh, what you call uh, precision. So rather than the decision uh, threshold being at 0.5, you would manually set a decision threshold. Uh, if this, what I'm saying is not making sense to you, don't worry, my code will, uh, will work as a good starting point and the official documentation is quite good, much better than what anyone could explain on their own. Text-based sources are often the best. So we can use something called SUOD, which is Scalable, outlier, scalable Unsupervised Outlier Detection, which is a framework made by the author of PYOD which takes in PYOD objects, but this is like a ensemble in a sense. Actually, it is an ensemble, and it's a nice way to uh, train the things in a parallel manner. So we run this, and we will find that our accuracy is actually not the best, which is uh, a bit interesting. Uh, what this means is depending on how many votes a algorithm gets as anomalous and we can see if we were to be liberal and be like oh if our uh, two votes yeah that's going to be relatively high but if you're like okay I demand that there are going to be at least 10 votes saying something is anomalous you get about 35% uh, accuracy 36% accuracy uh, now this will of course have a whole lot of ramifications on your uh, position of your data set. Of course you have to worry about your uh, you have to worry a whole lot about your position, your accuracy, position and your uh, recall. Uh, perhaps it would be wise to use something like a F1 score in this circumstance. But anyways Next off, I tried a VAE, and I found that after training, it actually uh, was not the best. Let's see. Uh, ah, it looks like I actually didn't even print it out. Uh, this is just a quick uh, copy and paste from my uh, proprietary data set into something public so I could share this code. This code was originally written when I was on my co-op. I just quickly moved everything to a public data set for a quick video just so I could give people some sample code so it would help them out in whatever they're doing themselves. I also tried a uh, whatever this stands for, it's been a very long time since I've worked on this, a whole year actually. Single objective generated adversarial active learning. If I recall correctly this code wasn't actually very good either. Anyways, uh, the gist of it is, the conclusion is that unsupervised anomaly detection is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, PYOD, the library PYOD is an excellent starting point. After this, you will want to check out uh, variational autoencoders. If, like me, you have a uh, categorical 
uh, focus data set, you will want the categorical variational autoencoder with a uh, Grumble softmax in the uh, bottleneck area. But that uh, deserves its own video. If you don't have categorical data, you can just use a regular autoencoder. Anyways, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, he, this will show a bit of the uh, explained variance ratio if you were to do a uh, PCA or truncated SVD. We can see that from uh, 43 variables, if you were to shrink the dimensionality down to 2 variables, you still get 99% uh, of the explained variance, which is quite interesting. This means that most of the uh, dimensions aren't actually giving you much uh, quote-unquote information. Uh, furthermore, for something like truncated SVD, we find a uh, sim similar story that a whole lot of the dimensions aren't actually giving you much new information. This is because, uh, as I showed you above, we get a whole column for something uh, file transfer protocol related information. So, what that means is that you have a whole lot of redundant information in this data set. And that's what makes anomaly detection difficult in the real world. Uh, feature engineering in unsupervised anomaly detection tends to be uh, quite important. Uh, this topic you could quite literally write your own master's thesis on. And I'm just trying to show you, give you guys some uh, simple code to uh, walk you guys through what you guys should consider doing for your own data sets, whatever they may be. Anyways, this is what a data set looks like with these NAS in two dimensions, these NAS in three dimensions, PCA after putting it into a min-max scalar, looks kind of like a diamond, you can see uh, there are some lines. This would have more semantic meaning if I got rid of the min-max scalar. If I recall correctly, this line is at positive 1, this line is at 0, and this line is at uh, negative 2. Anyways, uh, this is PCA3. So, so to wrap it up, I hope this video gave you some good uh, sample code on using the library PYOD and good luck with whatever you're doing.